We're back now to talk some more Hard Knocks, more on the first episode of the Hard Knocks offseason version, talking some more on the New York Giants. And I'm going to start off with a positive um, because so far, as you guys can see from the title, should the Giants already re- be regretting being on Hard Knocks? There's already been, in just one episode, a lot of negatives, I think, on how the Daniel Jones situation broke down, on how Saquon eventually ended up on the Philadelphia Eagles. I wanted to start off with a positive on how they managed to land Brian Burns. I thought that was arguably their best move this season to trade for Brian Burns to add to Dexter Lawrence and add to Kayvon Thibodeau. Although, in that same conversation, in some of the conversations that we saw in the first episode, there were some serious considerations about adding Christian Wilkins before he signed with the Las Vegas Raiders that I had no idea about. Um, Because it it happened so quickly when he signed with the Raiders. It was one of the first moves, I think, that was done. Um, I just thought it was the Raiders and that was it. I had no idea that the Giants really had a serious interest, as they mentioned um, in some of these conversations. But... Why Christian Wilkins, you might ask? Well, he played with Dexter Lawrence at Clemson. They were teammates there, very successful there. They won the national championship. So you could see in episode one how general manager Joe Joe Shane says that Dexter Lawrence actually texted him about Christian Wilkins, getting his thoughts on him, if he believed he could be a valid piece to add to this defense. Probably would have been with Dexter and Christian there in the middle. Uh, Would have been a great duo. Great interior defensive lineman duo to have. One of the best in the NFL for sure. And it just seems like the overall goal this offseason was to add more pass rushers. Regardless if it was Brian Burns, Christian Wilkins, or maybe somebody else that they looked at. The main idea, the main goal was to add another pass rusher. And you could see in the scene um, where the conversation happened. Joe Schoen and his scouts were talking about the potential free agents to add when one scout mentioned Christian Wilkins, and he said, uh, I, don't think, I don't think he's a difference-making pass rusher on third down, which is what we need opposite of Dex, but he's a really good football player. That will do well, that'll do well for him. Uh, that will do well for himself in free agency. And weird, weird statement there when I first read it. Um, very niche answer. Very niche reason to not go after Dexter Lawrence just because he's not, um, how do you put it, a great, he's not a great third down, not a difference making, excuse me, third down pass rusher in the opinion of this one scout. Um, Weird because in 2023, just last year, um, pressures from interior linemen, Christian Wilkins, he had 27 third down pressures, which was tied for second in the NFL. Only Quinnen Williams at 30 had more than Christian Wilkins, and he was tied for second um, with Chris Jones, DeForest Buckner, considered two of the best interior, just overall pass rushers in the NFL. And Christian Wilkins was right there with those guys, second in the NFL in third down pressures. And I saw a clip on Twitter that was going around that he actually got a third down sack against the New York Giants last year to just add some more irony on top of the entire situation in the entire episode the entire first episode was filled with ironic moments on how it all broke down with Daniel Saquon and now Christian Wilkins as well um not to say that trading for Brian Burns was a mistake because I started the segment off with saying that I really liked it um but with Brian Burns some people I saw when the trade was being you know finalized when it was close to being done and originally announced with Brian Burns they gave up a 2024 second round pick and a fifth round pick next year, um, or a fifth round pick this year, excuse me, and a 2025 conditional fifth round pick. Then they signed him to a five year, $141 million deal, which is about $28 million in salary per year. So you had to trade for him and then you paid him a lot of money, which in comparison to Christian Wilkins, if you really considered him, and what deal he got with the Las Vegas Raiders, he got a uh, four-year, $110 million deal, which is about $27.5 million. So you gave up more to actually get Brian Burns, and you still pay him about the same amount of money, which puzzled some people um, when this episode came out and puzzled some people at the time when they traded for Brian Burns because they probably would have thought it was a bit too expensive for the Giants. But overall... 
Wilkins is 28 compared to Brian Burns is 26 um, in age. So that is also a factor in all of this. But saying all of that and getting all that information out there, personally, what I could agree with the Giants is that I too would like the majority or the main pressure points from my defensive line coming. I would want it from the edge. Um, I think you need your more, um, per, what's the word I'm looking for? Your most elite pass rushers on the outside, just in my opinion. I find it more comfortable that um, having two elite pass rushers on the outside just ends up being better and almost easier for the interior guys um, because there's almost less space to work with. If you've blocked out the outsides, a quarterback can't run out there. He has to maneuver through a lot more bodies in the inside compared to if you rush him from the inside and not so good on the outside. He just runs to the outside, gets the edge, and then he gets five, six yards potentially closer to a first down or he gets the first down. So that's just me. So based on that sentiment, adding Brian Burns, I think overall isn't really that big of a difference compared to what you did give up for him compared to what you would have given up for Christian Wilkins. Um, that's just me, though. But overall, the main issue that why I brought this segment up and why I brought that scene up was that the main issue wasn't so much of Brian Burns and Christian Wilkins. Apples to oranges, you know. Um, not too much difference that you're getting there. Uh, just based on good players on the defensive line, it was going to improve regardless. It was going to be an improvement regardless of who you got based off of last year. You were going to get better there. But the main issue with the first episode just overall and going back to the question and the title of this segment is that the Giants haven't been really painted in a great light in my opinion. And really it just comes down to questionable decisions and just questionable um, reasons for some of these choices that they've made. Um... Like I mentioned, the with the one scout talking about Christian Wilkins, not a difference-making pass rusher on third down. It's almost like, you know, you couldn't think of another reason why you didn't want to sign Christian Wilkins. It just doesn't seem like a valid reason to me. Um, because what is a difference-making pass rusher on third down? So you have to have more sacks, just more pressures, just more um, causing more disruption in some way, shape, or form. It seems like a very vague answer to just throw out there for Christian Wilkins, who is a very good player, um, a very talented player at that in the middle of that defensive line. And oftentimes, the middle of that defensive line doesn't don't get too many sacks anyways. I don't think other than maybe Aaron Donald or um, I can't even think of another one, maybe DeForest Buckner or Eric Armstead, that Cam Hayward maybe, that play really close to the middle. Um, not too many of those guys get 15, 14 sacks anyway, so... The fact that Christian Wilkins, I think, just had nine this past season and he was tied for second in the uh, most amount of pressures on third down, you know, that answer, on top of being just vague and very niche to just focus in on one aspect of his game, um, arguably isn't totally accurate. So the reasonings that they've given behind not just this Christian Wilkins situation, but the Saquon one on... Um, deciding not to pay him because they decided to go with Daniel Jones because of that whole tangent that I could go off on on uh, teams just being more comfortable having a quarterback rather than any other position just because of the overvaluing of quarterbacks nowadays. They decided to go with Daniel Jones for that reason. They can't pay Saquon, especially after all that he's done for them. And now they're in a weird situation too where they could almost – Decide to go with Daniel, all right, say you could be better in 2024, but if you're also worse off, all the fans and everyone's going to expect you to make a decision on Daniel Jones and probably move on from him. So not only did you not sign Saquon, but you're also just going to end up losing Daniel Jones, which is the likely outcome because I don't think a lot of people put the Giants in a conversation where they're going to really impress this season. Most people would probably think it's going to be more of the same playing in a very competitive NFC. So having another lackluster season and losing Daniel Jones in the end just because he's not giving you the performances, the production that you need out of a quarterback, and then losing Saquon on top of it, the decision-making and the choices that you make at the time um, come back and really are amplified a lot more when such, such things like this happen. And that's why I wasn't really a big fan of 
showing like your favorite team on hard knocks because there's a lot of things that uh just fans can get mad about but then once they find out the reason why this happened or they it gets revealed on these episodes and it almost makes it even worse that's why I really would always avoid having one of my teams on hard knocks but as a Steelers fan they're going to be on hard knocks during the regular season so that should be exciting um especially if things go bad I'm definitely going to watch it and see and probably just get even more upset on why things are going bad but it just plays into it. It makes for great television, but again, these decisions and why and how they come to these decisions just really um, are the things that stand out to me with the first episode. We're only one episode in, and there's I've talked about three different things regarding the Giants and just how the coming to this decision has not been the most accurate, I think, or just the most um, cer- certain one at the end of the day, but that's it pretty much about Hard Knocks, the off-season version in episode one. That's another thing I talked about and just more um, fuel to the fire, you could say, on why probably the Giants are regretting it a little bit now after only episode one, but who knows? Maybe it could just get better um, and improve upon this, but we're just going to have to wait until tomorrow to see the second episode drop on HBO Max. But until then, we're going to take a break for right now. we got two more segments left to talk about. One, on the new look Cincinnati Bengals offense, Joe Burrow and new offensive coordinator Dan Pitcher talked about their new personnel and some of the things they want to do in 2024. And also, Blake Cashman, the new Minnesota Vikings linebacker, talked very highly about J.J. McCarthy. And we're going to talk about whether or not it would be a total disaster if J.J. ended up being the week one starter. Would that be worst case scenario for the Vikings? Stay tuned to find out. We'll be right back after this.